Hello everyone, I'm Lauren and welcome to another video from the Tiny Menagerie. Today I thought we'd be taking a look at one of the issues that you can have with the live plants in your tank, and in particular looking at biogenic decalcification, which is pretty much lime deposits on the leaves of your plants. So if we take a look at this plant, this is Anubius Barteri Nana, and it's suffering quite badly from decalcification. You can clearly see that there are white deposits on the surface of the leaves, and where algae has started to grow on these rough bits, then it started to look a bit green as well. The rest of the plant is nice and healthy, there's no yellowing, no signs of rot or anything like that, and yet we've got this really quite unsightly rough white substance that's somehow on most of this poor plant's leaves. And when it comes to understanding biogenic decalcification, that's actually quite an important point, that it's on most of the leaf, but not all of them. If you look closely at this leaf in particular, you can see that there's one patch up at the top where the leaf appears fairly normal, and some of the lower leaves as well have less of this white on them. And this is because decalcification is all to do with light, available carbon, and the type of plant that you're growing. So starting off with the plant, this Anubius is a slow-growing rhizomatous plant, and that means that it grows from a thick stem-like structure at its base, and the roots that come out from it anchor the plant in place as much as they absorb any nutrients. It's grown above the substrate, otherwise the rhizome can suffer badly from rot, and you might be wondering what this has got to do at all with biogenic decalcification. But it's because this plant is slow-growing that it's susceptible to the problem. And I say susceptible, it's actually a really clever mechanism for survival for the plant. So if you think about photosynthesis, then you know that this plant wants to take carbon from carbon dioxide that's in the water in order to make sugars for its own energy. But let's say this plant is growing at a time when there isn't enough carbon dioxide in the water. Let's say it's stagnating or something. Then this Anubius will try to fix carbon from freely available biocarbon ions instead, and these tend to be present in quite high concentrations in hard water. But in the process of doing so, it gets the carbon dioxide that it needs, but it also excretes hydroxide, which in the presence of strong light will react with the calcium that's in the water to form calcium carbonate. This is insoluble, and that's what's building up on the leaves. This is the lime that we can see. Basically, this plant is getting enough light to tell it that it should be able to grow really strongly, but it's not getting enough carbon dioxide in the water in order for it to do so and so it's trying to fix the problem itself by making its own. And so knowing this, from here we have three choices of how we can stop this unsightly white growth on the plant leaves. Number one, we can move the plant to reduce the amount of light that it's receiving. For example, if you look at this Cryptocorum willisii, you'll see that most of its leaves are absolutely fine, but these top few have just started to show a little bit of calcification happening, but it's only on the leaves that are directly under the light. Also, this Cryptocorum becketii, which has a much slower growth and is even more prone to decalcification, but it's doing just fine down here in the corner of the tank. It's perfectly happy. No sign of lime at all on its leaves. So between these two, I know that if I keep slow-growing plants out of direct light, then the calcification will stop, because the plant simply won't be receiving enough light to think it's able to grow that fast. This will ultimately mean slower growth, but it will be much healthier, and personally, I'm perfectly happy with that result. The second option that we would have would be to inject extra carbon dioxide into the tank so that there's so much free carbon in there, the plants don't even think about trying to fix any for themselves. But that is a big ask for such a small tank. This is only 25 litres. The risk of injecting too much carbon dioxide in there and killing all of the fish just isn't worth it. Plus, to be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of high-tech setups. I would much rather work with the plants and let them grow at their own rate, and enjoy them while they do so, rather than force them to grow ever faster in ever brighter light with an ever higher concentration of carbon. It's just not how I like to grow things. Option three is to reduce the light itself. This is best achieved using floating plants like something simple, even duckweed or something, for example, they can happily be in bright sunlight all day long. In fact, it's what they prefer, and as they grow, they will shade out the plants in the water below them. This is the perfect option if you like floating plants, and if you don't have any other fast-growing plants in your tank who would prefer the stronger light to remain. Personally, though, I'm going to move the plants around and see how they get on, because one, I don't much like floating plants, and two, I do have species in here who like the higher light, such as the mosses, for example. 
And so here we are. It's been about four weeks, and here is a cutting that I took from the Anubius, and I've moved it into a much darker tank. You can already see that the new growth isn't getting the lime deposits like those you can see on the older leaves. And so it certainly seems to be much more comfortable in this lower light level. But what if you've already had your plant go as far as mine has and you want to get rid of the lime? Well, it is insoluble, so unfortunately it's not going to dissolve in the water unless the pH gets really, really low. In which case you're looking at damaging anything else in there as well. It's certainly not going to do fish, snails or shrimp any good. Luckily though, if you happen to be growing the plant on something that allows you to take it out quite easily, so a rock or something, then you can use a bit of distilled vinegar to wipe the leaves clean. Just take your affected plant out, a few drops of vinegar onto each leaf, and then rub it very gently to remove the lime as it dissolves. Try not to pick at it, because you'll just damage the surface of the leaf underneath. The aim here isn't to get a perfect looking leaf, that's not going to happen unfortunately, you just want to remove as much lime as you can so that the leaf can go back to photosynthesizing without having all of this white crust in the way. Once you've removed as much as you can, be sure to give the plant a really good rinse before you put it back in the tank. And obviously, don't put it straight back into the bright light again, otherwise it's just going to have the same problem come straight back. Biogenic decalcification is an annoyance if you have slow-growing plants, or any plants really that have this adaptation to low carbon in the water. I would say it's a condition you need to keep an eye out for when your plants start to grow, and just be ready to make changes if you need to. It's like anything else really, the more you interact with your tank, the more you learn what's normal, and the quicker you get at recognising when plants are trying to tell you something is wrong. And then with any luck, you can react to it a little bit quicker than I did so that the leaves don't get quite this bad. Overall though, while biogenic decalcification is certainly an annoyance as I say, it's certainly not the end of the world and it can easily be fixed and prevented. Anywho though, I hope you've enjoyed this little video. Happy fish keeping everyone, keep those plants happy and healthy, and I'll see you again soon. Bye!